In this part of the lecture, we'll talk about how to fix the issue of unbounded error and develop the full version of the DGIN algorithm. The idea is that instead of summarizing fixed length blocks, we this time we'll try to summarize blocks with specific number of ones. So basically we'll let the block sizes, i.e. the number of ones, to increase exponentially. And when there are, in this case, when there are few ones in the window, the block sizes will stay small. So the errors are small. So, and concretely, uh, we may split the buckets like this. For example, in here, we can see that this bucket is of, of contains only one one. And this bucket contains only two ones. And this bucket contains only four ones. So basically, the, the actual size of the bucket, it depends on um, how, how, many, how many bits it has to include in order to have the exact number of ones in the bucket. Now, um, each bit in the stream has a timestamp and starting one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. And basically we'll need to recall the timestamps uh, modular M which is the window size. And in this, this way, we can represent any relevant timestamp in O log n bits. So using this, we can say that a bucket in the uh, DGIM method is actually a record consisting of the timestamp of its n. So basically this can be represented by O log n bits, as we mentioned before. And the second part of the record is the number of ones between its beginning and the end. And we have constraints on the buckets. For example, we, we say that the number of ones inside the bucket must be a power of two. For example, this bucket contains uh, four ones and this bucket contains eight ones. So four is a number. Four is equal to uh, two to the power of two, and eight is equal to two to the power of three, right? And this actually explains why it needs log log n bits here. Because, for example, let's take eight as an example. Let's uh, eight to to store this number eight, since we know that this number has to be the power of two. So basically, this is like this is equal to two to the power of three. Therefore, we actually only need to store the number three here. And in order to store an integer three, we only need log three bits. And this is why we only need log log eight bits to store the number eight here. And this is why in general, in order to, in order to, store, uh, to, to store a number uh, at most n, we will need only log log n bits. And we have also other constraints on the buckets. And one of them is that either one or two bucket with the same power of two number of ones. So, so for example, uh, uh, only we can have only one or two buckets uh, with, uh, with four ones, and we can have only one or two buckets with eight ones. And, this, and another constraint is that the buckets do not overlap in timestamps. And the bucket must be sorted by size. So earlier buckets are not smaller than later buckets. And the buckets can disappear when the end time. So basically the, the, right, the right margin of the bucket, we call it the end time. So the end time must be uh, the end time if it's larger than n, then the bucket will disappear. So concretely, let's look at that, look at this example. Let's say that we have this data stream and we already split it into several buckets. Now let's check uh, these three properties of the buckets that are maintained. So the first property is that either one or two buckets with the same power of two numbers uh, of one. So basically, uh, uh, let's say that we can track the buckets of size one. We can see that it only have two buckets of size one. 
and it has only one bucket of size two, it has only two buckets of size four. So one, two, four, they're both, they're all power of two, right? So basically we can see that uh, the first property is, is maintained quite well. And for the second property, buckets do not overlap in time stamp. Obviously, this is also uh, this is also good because they don't overlap. And for the third one, buckets are sorted by size. We can see that this is buckets of size one. This is size two, size size four, size eight. So they're all well sorted. Therefore, all three properties of the buckets are maintained. And one question is that how do we update the buckets whenever we have new bits coming right so when a new bit comes in we're going to first drop the last or equivalent the oldest bucket if it's end time is actually prior to end time units before the current time All right uh, basically that's that means that if if this end time is actually is actually here, then we're going to drop this whole bucket uh, at the same time. So, and in here we have two cases. So either, either the current or the new bit is zero or one. So if the new, if the current bit is zero, for example, here, this is the new bit, then we, we don't need to do anything. No other changes are needed, right? But if the current bit is one, then we would need to first create a new bucket of size one just for this bit. And the end timestamp of this bucket would be the current time. And the second step would be to check if there are, uh, there are now, if, if there are now three buckets of size one, since we can actually have at most two buckets of the same size, right? Therefore we need to combine uh, the oldest two buckets of size one into one bucket of size two. And since we have a new bucket of size two, we need to check if there are, if there are now three buckets of size two. If there are actually as many as three buckets of size two, then we need to combine the oldest, oldest two buckets of size two into a new bucket of size four and so on and so forth until we reach, uh, we reach the very beginning of the window. Let's look at a more concrete example to see how this works. Let's say that the current state of the string looks like this. So we have, basically we have these two small buckets and we have one bucket of size two, two buckets of size four, so on and so forth. And let's say that we have this new bit of value one arrives here. We can see that we already uh, create a new bucket here and the bucket is of size one. And since now we have three buckets of the same, same size, we're, we're gonna have to uh, combine these two buckets, this oldest two bucket of size one into one larger bucket. So we have combined it, combined these two orange buckets uh, into, a, into one yellow bucket of size two. And then let's say that one, the next bit of one here comes and uh, we create a new bucket and it doesn't exceed the maximum number of buckets of the same size. So we leave it alone. And a new, a new orange bucket is created. And then another bit comes, the zero comes and we don't need to do anything. Uh, and then we have a one comes here. And at this moment, we can see that we already have three buckets of the same size. So then again, we need to combine these two buckets into a, into a yellow bucket, right? So we combine it. And now we, we see that it actually has a ripple effect. We, we can see that we, had, we, now have a, we, had not, we now have three buckets of, of size two. Then again, we will need to combine these two yellow buckets into a purple bucket, right? And then we can see that we might also need to combine uh, the two purple buckets into a red bucket and so on and so forth. So after we merge all these all these buckets, this is the states of the buckets. We can see that this is the this is basically the final states after all these four new bits comes. 
and it actually satisfies all the properties uh, of our constraints. Now, another question is, uh, once we construct all these buckets, how do we how do we handle the query? Basically, how to how to estimate the number of ones in the most recent entries. So, in order to do this, we can have uh, we can first sum the sizes of all the buckets except for the last one. So, basically, the size size here means the number of ones uh, in the bucket, and then we can add half the size of the last bucket to the number. And remember that we actually do not know how many ones of the last bucket are still within the one window. So this is the uh, this is the source, the only source of error in our algorithm, right? And concretely, let's say that we we already construct uh, the buckets here and we want to ask the question how many how many ones are there? inside this window of length n. And to answer this question, we're gonna uh, just sum up all these windows. We'll basically answer will be one plus one plus two, plus four plus four plus eight plus eight. And the last number to add would be half of 16, which is eight. So the final number uh, this algorithm provides will be 36. So, one maybe one last question is why why do we say that the error is bounded? So why is the error bounded by 15? We can actually prove this easily. Let's suppose that the last bucket has a size of two to the power of r, right? And then by assuming by assuming that two to the power of r r minus one, basically half of its ones are still within the window we actually make an error of at most, at most half of it, right? So we, we make an error of at most two to the power of r minus one. So this is the absolute value of the error we make. And then let's look at the smaller buckets. And since there is at least one bucket of each of the sizes less than two to the power of r. So basically what this means is that we, we have at least one bucket of two to the power of r minus one, we have we have at least one one bucket of two to the power of r minus two, et cetera, et cetera. And we have at least one bucket of four, at least one bucket of two, at least one bucket of one, right? So the true sum of of these uh, of these bucket is at least one plus two plus four, et cetera, et cetera. And this is actually equal to two to the power of r minus one. So we can see that the error is at most 50%, right? We can, if you divide, divide this number uh, by this number, again, basically it's at most 50, right? Then more interestingly, actually, we can further reduce this error bound of 50% by, uh, slightly modifying the output. So instead of maintaining one or two of each size bucket, let's say that we allow either R minus one or R buckets of each size. So except, except for the largest size bucket, uh, right? We can have any number between R minus one or R of those. Right? And in this case, the error rate will be even lower. The error bound will be at most uh, O one, over R. So by picking R appropriately, we can actually trade off between the number of bits we need to store and the error. And to summarize, we, we have now talked about uh, sampling a uh, fixed proportion of the stream. So basically in this, in this problem setting, the sample size will grow as the stream grows. And we also talked about sampling a fixed size sample. Uh, this is the algorithm what we call reservoir sampling. And last but not least, we, all, we also talked about how to count the number of ones in the last n elements. And we, we talked about an algorithm that uses uh, exponentially increasing windows. Uh, so, uh, this is the, the DGI algorithm we talked about.